Good evening. How is everybody this evening? Good. It's good to be in the Lord's house tonight. Yeah, everybody can you can do your fingers like this, get loosened up, because Lord willing, we're going to look at a lot of scripture uh, tonight. Um, we're going to start in 1 Corinthians 1. First Corinthians one, we'll start in verse uh, six. First Corinthians one six, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift. Warning for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm, confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hebrews 10, 19. Kind of look at some verses about uh, our Lord and Savior, how faithful he is. Hebrews 10, 19. Having therefore, brother, boldness to enter into the holy, holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath concentrated for us th through the veil that is to say his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised he's faithful Amen. we serve a faithful Faithful God, don't we? A faithful Savior. Let's go on back here to 1 John 1. First John 1, verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not, is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. But he's faithful. He's faithful. That, that's, that's our model. That's who we should try to strive to be more like Jesus, right? We should, we should strive to be more like that. So we want to look at being faithful. We're going to look a little bit uh, tonight about being faithful. If you'll get back here to 1 Corinthians um, 4. Go through a few verses here, then Lord will get into the message tonight. First Corinthians four, verse seventeen. For this cause have I sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son and what? Amen. Faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of all my ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Let's go on up here to Ephesians 6. Love hearing them pages turn. Love hearing them pages turn. Ephesians 6, we'll read uh, verse 21. But the, that ye also may know my affairs and how I do, Philopolis, a, bro, a beloved brother and a what? Faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that ye might know our affairs and that he may comfort your hearts. 
It's going over here to Colossians 4. We're just climbing the ladder here. Colossians 4. We'll start in verse 7. All that my state sh shall Thyobolus declare unto you who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and a faithful servant in the Lord whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that he might know your estates and comfort your hearts with Onimus, a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. And one more, we'll go up here to First Peter. First Peter five. We'll look at verse twelve here. First Peter five twelve. By Silvius, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I've written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand. We'll go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be in your house tonight, Lord. I just pray that you be at this service tonight, Lord. Have your will and way, Lord. Just speak to our hearts, Lord. Help teach us out of your word what you want us to have, Lord. We're just so thankful for the opportunity to be here to, to fellowship one another tonight, Lord. Just uh, lift us up, encourage us uh, as we go out into the world from here, Lord. We just thank you, love you, and praise you. In Jesus' name we ask this thing. Amen. Faithful, faithful. God has a lot to say about being faithful, right? It, well, you can go through God's word and find a lot about faithful. Now, I, if you, I, we serve the Lord with a lot of faithful people. I know a lot, of, a lot of our brothers and sisters here are faithful. So if you weren't at the baptism, don't, don't let your feelings get hurt. That just happened to be where God touched my heart about this, okay? So the, the, the message is for all of us, but I want to start at the, the baptism. So, you know, it, it just really, the Lord just spoke to me at the baptism about faithful. You know, as, as we were gathered here together, there were so many young people. There were a lot of young people that were getting baptized. Yeah. But there were a lot of our young people of, of the church that just came to the service. I said, man, they, they, and I was hopeful when I would be here tonight so I could just sit down with them and, and we could talk because, you know, you could ask them in their head, you know, I'm sure the devil does it to the older people, but I'm sure the young crowd, they could have said, the devil would have said, you really want to go to the watch of baptism today? You could go here and the ministry, you could go be with your friends and having fun doing this over here. You really going to go to a church rock and watch the baptism? You know, I was just so impressed at how they were faithful yeah. coming to, to a service like that in the, in the middle of the day on a Sunday. And then, you know, uh, Brother James, yeah. this, this little lady right here, Charlotte, they yeah. pulled up. Yeah. And, you know, we had to, they, they struggled. It was cold. Yeah. You know, we had to help get some chairs out. That, that they can't walk as good as everybody else. But you know what? They couldn't get down to the river yeah. where the baptism was. But you know what? They were faithful. Yeah. I said, man, look in there. They could have said, I hurt. You know, it's cold outside. I, I don't, we don't, there's nobody there that we know. You know, that's part of our family getting baptized. It would have been very easy for them just to sit right. at the house, watch it out the window, watch the birds or the squirrels or the deer that James feed or whatever. But you know, it, you know it, it, it spoke to me. A lot of the people there, a lot of times God, God, God talks to us, speaks to us in different ways. But, you know, little things that we do as Christians, yeah. we, don't, we don't realize how it's touching other people's yeah. lives. Being faithful is so important. And, you know, again, it, I know people have things come up and other things to do. I'm not saying about that you weren't there. But right. God just used that. You know, as Carol was there. She didn't have any family getting baptized, but as I was holding her hand, helping her keep her from fall, because she wanted to get down to the river. Yeah. She didn't have to. She could have just 
stayed up there. If she at her age, if she falls and breaks the hip, she may never get back up and do it. You know, she she has um, osteoporosis. She's uh, cemented together in the back. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's part of her ministry. Yeah, it is. To speak to a little a young whippersnapper like me. Yeah. That 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 just you know that spoke to me. People. You know, and it doesn't have to be, again, about the baptism, but I want to encourage you as we go through this, part of your ministry is just being faithful. Right. It's just being faithful. We talk all the time about you don't, we don't have to take the Bible and beat people over the head with it. You know, if that, if that shows something to me, what do you think when you're doing something, just being faithful is, is speaking to other, other Christians? Other people that are lost, maybe Christians that are struggling, and they say, hey, man, that, that per- they're, they're faithful in their walk for the Lord. You know, I used all those guys there that we don't really know the whole lot of their names. You don't see a lot of their names written in the Bible. They're just people. They were people probably like you and me. They loved the Lord. They were serving the Lord. What did the Bible say about them? They were faithful. They were faithful. That's something that, that's hard to do sometimes, ain't it? It's hard to be faithful sometimes. Hey, Amen. For me, it's hard sometimes to stay faithful. Right. If I'm the only one that's going to say amen, hey, it's sometimes it's hard to stay faithful. Right. There, there's a lot that wants to pull us in the different directions, a lot that comes up. You know, we, we, get, we get a lot of things happening in our life, but it, so many times it's hard. Let's go back here to Nehemiah. Nehemiah 7, you know, it it is just, we need to be faithful as we can in in the the work of the Lord, our walk of the Lord, because there's so many people watching us, but it it affects so many people that we don't even know. Uh, Carol didn't have a clue that that the Lord was using her as I was walking down with her to, to speak to me. James and Charlotte, they didn't know. The young people, you know, I got to thinking about the young people that got baptized. It was cold. That water was cold. My, my face was about numb when we got out of there. But I thought, you know what? I'm so proud of them young people. They could have said, you know, it's pretty cold. Maybe I'll we'll just wait until next year. Maybe we'll, maybe they'll do it in the warm weather next year. But, you know, they were faithful. They, they came out there and they said, you know what? We have give our life to the Lord. We're going to have baptism this day, cold or hot. Yeah. We're, going to, we're going to have it. They stayed faithful to what they said they were going to do, and they did it. But they were faithful. Nehemiah 7, and we'll just read 1 and 2 here. Now it came to pass when the wall was built, and I had set the doors, and the potters, and the singers, and the Levites were appointed. Then I gave my brother Hanai and Hanea, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem, for he was a what? Faithful. Faithful man and feared God above many. Hey, you do you want your ministry to grow? Amen. Nobody Amen. wants your ministry. No, you all got a ministry. We talk about that all the time. Do you want your ministry to grow? Right. You know, one thing we need to do is be faithful. Nothing in life, life, life in general, we need to be faithful. Amen. But our walk with the Lord, we need to be as faithful as possible. You know, I think about, hey, I might be a Hey, when, when we, when, do you, you are out there. And you're doing a work for the Lord. As you read through scripture, God shows so many times that the the people he put in charge, he says to us, they were faithful. They were faithful in the Lord. It wasn't just people out here uh, just going around, okay, I'm saved. I'll go to church every now and then. I may do my ministry every here and there, once in a blue moon. These people had a, he had a, a quite a responsibility, didn't he? He said, as a ruler of the palace over Jerusalem, he was a faithful man. 
God said, I'm going to put somebody in charge that is faithful. Don't you want to be somebody around you that's faithful if they're in charge? Um, you don't want them, you don't want them not, to, not to go. You know, thinking about, just think about your, your, the things as a parent. some stuff that the Lord wants me to do and I got to be faithful I've got to be faithful you've got some stuff that the Lord wants you to do as Pastor Glenn said I don't know who in here he's called to do what but I would almost say the Lord's got some people in here that that he's he's wanting you to call some people or he's wanting you to stop by and visit some people or he's wanting you to be a prayer warrior. He, he's got you wanting to do something to be something. And he's wanting you to be faithful at it. You want it to grow? Hey, Chris, faith, Chris faithfully buys flowers every year. And she wants them to be beautiful. But she ain't near faithful about watering them things. <laughs> And every year, if I don't step in, they all are dead. <laughs> you, we've got to be faithful about, you know, that, that's, we, we've got to be faithful or our ministry's going to die. Amen. The Lord's saying, hey, I, I'm, I'm putting some guy in, I'm going to put this man in here because I know he is he, he loves me. He said he fears the Lord. That means he loved the Lord. He loved God. And he was a faithful man. God said, hey, I'm going to put this man in charge. I'm going to put him in a, a position where he can make some things happen. He got, he got Dickie in a position where he gets to, gets to teach the word of the Lord every Sunday. But now if Dickie every, every other Sunday starts calling somebody, hey, can you? Uh, I, I'm not going to make next week. I'm, you know, I might be able to do it next week, or maybe I'll skip three weeks. And, right. and you know, it, he's not going to be faithful. That the God's not going to really use that ministry to his full potential. He wants to put somebody in there that's faithful, Amen. just like your ministry. You have a ministry, whatever it is. You know what it is. If, if Sandy wouldn't come in here every Wednesday, our choir would suffer. If she wouldn't be faithful to coming in to help teach us, to help us to grow, to singers, uh, the choir choir wouldn't be as, sound near as good as it does. I don't care what anybody says. I love to hear our choir when we belt it out. Whether we know tunes or, or, or whatever, we carry a tune. But I, think, I think it sounds great, but you know why? Because it's faithful. Faithfulness to that ministry. You know, the Lord is looking for us to be to be faithful, to stay on course, it, to try to, to, it makes an effect on people. Charlotte and Ramsey and Carol and those young people had no clue, no clue what God was doing in my heart on Sunday, but they were, and all they were doing was being faithful. We weren't talking about the Lord a whole lot. We was going down to the river, Amen. but they were faithful. Yeah. They were faithful. There's people that come in here every Sunday that are faithfully coming to church. I hope it's to serve the Lord, not just to make an appearance, 
but faithful. They fear the Lord. They love the Lord. They want to hear. They want, want to hear what the Lord's got for them. They want to be with their brothers and sisters. Faithful. Let's go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy two. Or maybe we'll start in one. Second Timothy two one. Second Timothy two one. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same commit thou to what? Faithful. Faithful. Commit it to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Hey, if you want to teach somebody something, you want to be able to teach somebody something, be faithful. It's like we're saying about our children or other people around us. You want somebody to learn something, we got to be faithful. By them being, being faithful taught me much. And they didn't even try. They were teaching, they were teaching me. They were teaching me that I need to be faithful. They were teaching me that look to how God can use you just by being faithful. That's right, Hey, I don't know, I, I never did go in the military, but uh, if I was ever to be it says that they're born of your harness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. But if I was ever, if I'm in the battle, I must be like thankful around it. Hey, when I go into battle and I'm praying for Megan, I want some other people in that battle praying with me. I don't want to be in alone, but I need somebody faithful. I want people that are faithfully praying. You can pray once a week if you want. But I, when I go to the Lord with somebody that's got a need, I want some faithful people praying. I want a soldier that's in that fight to win it. I want that soldier that's in it to be a soldier. They love the Lord for faithful men and women and children and young people. That's what we're trying to do downstairs, right? Right. We're trying to train, teach them, teach them children to be faithful, to fear the Lord. Hey, you, wanna, you want your ministry to grow? You want to be able to go out in, into the, the highways and the byways to, to teach people, to show people, to help people? We got to be faithful. We got to be faithful about coming to God's house. We got to be faithful about the ministry that he has us in. We got to be faithful about opening this up. I even think we got to be faithful about singing to the Lord. Hey, he said he, when he saved my soul. He put a new song in my mouth, didn't he? Hey, hey he saved the Lord. Let that be part of your ministry. Hey. Amen. Faithful. We need to be faithful. Amen. Faithful men and women and children. Child of God, we, we need to be faithful. It's something I think we all struggle with, but 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 that God shows us in His Word. Hey, what what happens? He's going to put faithful people out there, and He's going to use them. He's going to make some things happen. You, you want to see things happen? And we all praying for the lost. We're all praying for the lost. Be faithful. Keep praying, even when it's not looking like it's looking like it ain't ever going to happen. We got to keep praying. Keep praying and keep praying. Let's, let's look up here in Revelation 17. We'll finish up in the book of Revelation. Try to encourage ourselves a little bit here. Let's let's look uh, let's look at verse ten. Seventeen will start at ten. 
And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the, the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven, goeth in perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest and are ten kings which had received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength, strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords, the king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and what? Faithful. Faithful. <laughs> That's, I got it right there. That's me. I want to be in that, that, that group right there. And, well, you know, the, the, there's a lot in there, but that faithful, I think the faithful are going to be up on the front line getting to smack some people around. Amen. Faithful. Amen. The faithful. Let's go on up here to 19. We'll read 6 through 11 here. And I heard, as it were, the voice of great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, and the Lord God on omnipotent reign. Let us be glad and rejoice. Let us, let us Amen. be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and the wife hath made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Right blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, there, These are true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou, do it not, for I am a fellow servant and of the brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon it was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. We serve a faithful and true Savior. Amen. Faithful. He is faithful and true, and that's what he wants out of us. He wants us to be faithful. Amen. He is faithful. We'll finish up here in verse 20, or chapter 21. We'll read 1 through 8. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adored for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne, behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, write these things. These words are true and faithful. He said, write these words. They're true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha, Omega, the beginning and end. I will give unto him that a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He's going to give it to him freely. We're going to go on to he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, all liars, have their part in the lake of fire, which with burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. He's faithful. What he says in this book, it's it's true. He, his promises, he's faithful in all of his promises. His word is faithful. He wants us as a child of God to be faithful Amen. in what we do for him, how we live our lives. He wants
wants us to be faithful. So just think about that. Are you, are you faithful as the example that, that people see around you as a, as a faithful person? Are you faithful in your walk in life? Are you faithful as a child of God? Could God write my name in there? I, I like, could God write my name in there as a faithful, faithful man of God? Have you, maybe we could just stand this evening and if we could bow our heads. Have you ever come to that, that fountain of water, of life, and accepted him as your, your Lord and Savior? Have you, has it ever been a, a time in your life when, when you came to the faithful Savior and accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Has it ever been a time in your life when you've done that? Will you be able to, to be with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? If you'd like to make tonight tonight, it says the day is the day of salvation. you're here tonight and you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, tonight can be the night. you just like to pray, to come to the altar and pray that, uh, that the Lord help you be more faithful in your walk. you just like to, to pray and ask him to help you to, to be more faithful. I'm going to take a minute and, and I'm going to go down and I'm going to pray. Uh, just pray, pray that the Lord speak to hearts tonight. But I know me, myself, uh, the Lord spoke to me that I need to be more faithful in my walk. I need to be more faithful with what I uh, am out here in the world doing. So we'll just take a minute, pray for others, pray for those that if there's someone here that's lost, that the, the Lord will touch their heart and they make this, this night a night of salvation. just so proud of everybody that that was able to make it out tonight i know like i said we serve i serve with a lot of people that are very faithful we're just thankful for everybody that made it out tonight i know there's so many that wanted to be here um that can't be here and there's many times like I said, we can't be at every service uh, just uh, let let it speak to your heart and just try to to remember the lord wants us to be as faithful as we can be for Amen. his his walk uh, Anthony, you close us in a word of prayer, please. Lord, we want to thank you for this opportunity to come to your house tonight. Yes. 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 Thank you.